If you have your Bible, Luke 22. Boy, I tell you folks, don't give me much time to preach. Luke 22, verse 31. Praise God. Amen. Luke 22, verse 31. I love this passage. Oh, praise the Lord. The Gospel of Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Now look at this. I love this because Jesus already knows. He already knows the outcome. Peter, you're about to be sifted, but look at, he already knows the outcome. He says, and when thou art converted, (laughs) strengthen thy brethren. When when you come out of this, when you come back, strengthen thy brethren. And I I look at this. In other words, Peter, before you can strengthen other people, you got to be sifted. (laughs) What? Before you can help others, you're going to have to go through the fire. It's quiet. Ouch. Yikes. You want to be used of God? Do you really? Oh, this is good stuff. Satan has asked for you. Father, we thank you, God, for your help, your grace. Thank you for the body of Christ. I pray, God, that you'd help us to minister thy word. Please, God, touch our hearts today. Because I believe there are a lot of good people that are being sifted right now. Strengthen them, God, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated here this morning, and God bless you. Amen. I'd like to take a new look at this great passage of the Bible. I've, I've ministered from this passage years ago, but I, I've looked at this. God brought it back to my heart, and I just want to take a new look at this. Some of you have heard some of this. Some of you have not heard this, but nevertheless, I believe it's going to be a help and a strength to us today. This is that passage in the Bible where Jesus told Peter that he would deny him. Now, Peter had a hard time understanding this. Peter said that he was ready to go to prison for Jesus, die for the Lord. But sometimes we have good intentions and what we say at times, but our reaction might be a little different when we find ourselves really going through the situation. Many times we say that we're going to do this for God. We're going to pray. We're going to give. We're going to commit. We're going to sacrifice. But then when the time comes, sometimes we back out just a little bit there. I'm not saying that you didn't have good intentions when you said it. I'm not saying that you didn't believe God when you said it. But many times saying it and doing it are two different things altogether. There's a big difference between being a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. And let me just say this. We need more doers today than just hearers. It is good to hear the word of God. Don't get me wrong. But let's make sure that we're applying it to our lives to the best of our ability by the grace of God and living it out. There were things that Jesus knew that Peter did not know. And there were things that Jesus knows that we don't know either. Right? We don't know everything do we? Peter didn't know everything and we don't know everything either. I guess you could say that we have some growing room. Amen. Talk to tell somebody growing room. Amen. Growing room. Amen. We have some room to learn so remain humble, remain broken, remain teachable before God. There were things the devil didn't know that Jesus knew. That's because the devil is not all knowing. The devil doesn't know everything but God does. See we know that God is all knowing. God knows everything. He knew everything everything about Peter. He knows everything about the devil. And God knows everything about us also. Amen. He knows our thoughts before we know our thoughts. He knows the fire. He knows the trial. He knows the hardship before the worlds were ever created, before we were ever born. God knows everything all at once. All of eternity, all at once, at all times. It blows my mind. I can't remember the next day. I can't remember what I preached last week. (laughs) It blows my mind. Amen. Now, in verse 31, it says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But then Jesus says, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Notice that thy faith fail not. Faith. Faith. I want you to 
zoom, zoom in on that word right then. Hone in on that word, faith. Uh, aren't you thankful for these words today? Why? Because it helps us to understand some things. Uh, maybe like the reason we might be experiencing attacks from Satan. Uh, you see, today, Christians are under attack. Uh, churches are under attack. Uh, preachers are under attack. More and more and more, as I see in these last days that we're living. Now, in this text, we're going to learn some things about Jesus. We're going to learn some, some, some things about the devil, the enemy of our soul. We're going to learn some things about Peter, and we're also going to learn some things about ourselves. Peter had this incredible experience. I'm not saying that he would want to go through this again, but it was an experience that happened to Peter. And we all need experiences, and we all have experiences. But the experience doesn't mature us in and of itself. It is vital, though. It is necessary. We need the experience in our lives. When you were born again, that was an experience. Would you say yes? That was an incredible Incredible, life-changing experience, but that experience did not immediately make you a mature Christian. You were a baby in Christ. Is that right? We were babes in Christ. But it did open the door to thousands of opportunities for spiritual growth and maturity. So the experience is necessary. When my children were born, I didn't immediately hand them the keys to the car and say that they could drive it. No. Why? Because they were babies. Amen. Because although they had the experience of being born, they were not mature enough to drive a car yet. They were ready for that and there were some things that uh, we're not ready for yet either. In other words, the experience did not mature my children, but the experience was necessary for growth and maturity. It opened up the door for growth and development, but we have to feed them. They had to grow. They had the thirst. They had the hunger. They had the desire. We have to want it, my beloved. So understand here that the experiences in our lives are necessary and God will allow many, many things to take place in our lives because it's vital for Christian growth and maturity, for growth and development. Amen. Very important in the Christian life. Not just the birth. It's the birth, then the growth and development and maturity. And there are stages of growth, development and maturity as well. So what I'm saying here today, and we understand that there is a process. I cannot expect a one-year Christian to know as much as a 50-year Christian. Amen. So the 50-year Christian or the 30-year Christian cannot expect the one-year Christian to know as much as them. Because why? There is a process. Just like in life when you're born as a baby, there's a process of growth and maturity and development. In the Christian life, there's a process of growth and maturity and development. Jesus said in Mark 4 and 28, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, First the blade, then the ear, and after that the full ear in the corn. So you can't go from the blade to the full ear of the corn. First is the blade, then the ear, then the full ear in the corn. And so what Jesus is showing here is that there were stages of growth and development. There are stages of maturity in the Christian life. Okay, so so you see this again with your own children. At first they are completely dependent upon their parents, but after some time they begin to learn some things. They learn how to roll over. Remember the days, folks? They learned how to crawl. Remember the day when they learned how to crawl? And then they learned how to uh, walk a little bit. They pulled themselves up and they learned how to pick themselves up. They learned how to walk. They learned how to run. And eventually they learned how to drive. Oh, my dear Lord God. Gabe got his temps. Oh, God, look out. Amen. Everybody help us. Amen. I remember when Gabe was a baby. I remember when he was just a little thing. Couldn't do anything for himself. And now he's got his temps. You wonder why we have gray hair. But there's a process, okay? So there's growth and development and maturity. Gabe couldn't drive, amen, uh, 18 years ago. He couldn't drive 17 years ago. He can't drive now. <laughs> but he has the tents, all right? Remember, brother, they're temps. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So, so, okay, so eventually they learn how to do for themselves. They learn how to drive. When Michael and Matthew were just little boys, I didn't tell them to go out and cut the grass. Why? Because they were too young to do that. But there were some things they could do. They could help take out the trash. They could help pick up their toys. They could help clean their room. Amen? But then as growth and development, the process took place over time, they learned how to mow the grass. 
At one time, Michael bought his own lawnmower, and then he bought his own pickup truck, and then he can drive himself around town. Morgan also and Matthew. And I love this because that was a great victory for mom and dad. I mean, it's 9 o'clock at night, and we go in the fridge. There's no milk. Hey, Matthew, would you run to the store? And would you get some milk for mom and dad? And then as they're there, I'm texting them and get double stuffed Oreos while you're there also. Mommy doesn't know that. They come back with a grocery bag and mommy says, I thought you're supposed to just get milk. Yeah, but daddy texts me. <laughs> That's the way it works. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so they, they learned how to grow. They can run errands for mom and dad. Morgan and Matthew, I have them running all the time for me, and I do appreciate it. But listen, my friend, they didn't start out doing that. It took time. It was a process. So don't think the moment you're saved that you know and understand everything there's to know about God. Listen, my beloved, you're not going to understand everything there is to understand about the Bible. It takes time. You know, turn, turn me up some more, brother, because i got, I got to wake these folks up. When I was in Bible college, you know, I, 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 I got very discouraged and very frustrated and very impatient with myself because everybody else seemed to know so much about the Bible, but I'm a new Christian. And so I would get so frustrated because I wanted to know the Bible. I wanted to know everything about it. Amen. But I can tell you, I've been in this a long time. We've lived in Ohio for 21 years. I have been preaching more or less on a full-time basis for 21 years. 21 years now. Now listen to me. I cannot expect myself 21 years ago to know what I know today. There are messages I can preach now that I could not preach 21 years ago. Why? Because there's growth and development. I have been learning. God has been teaching me. I've gone through the fire. I've gone through hardship. God has brought me through. And God said, when you return to me, I want you to strengthen your church. Hallelujah. I want you to help them. I don't want you just to preach at them. I want you to preach with them. I want you to join with them. I want you to pastor my people, uh, shepherd my people, show my people, help my people, restore my people when they fall, when they fail, when they fall into sin. Bring them out out of it. Help them along the way. You get this? Growth and development and maturity. First the blade, then the ear, then the full ear in the corn. You can't jump stages. There's growth and development and maturity that needs to take place. So here we have Peter. And Jesus is telling him that he's about to go through this experience. Buddy, you're about to be sifted. You're going to go through some things. He's going to experience some things. There's a sifting that's about to take place. But the greatest thing is what happens next. Jesus said, but I have prayed for you. Man. I love this. Hallelujah. Now you learn something about Jesus here. And that is, he's the divine intercessor on your behalf. Praise God. See, it doesn't matter what kind of trial that you might be going through. You can know and have confidence that someone is praying for you and that someone is Jesus. He sits at the right hand of the Father and makes intercession for the saints. Just know that when you can't pray for yourself, when nobody else can pray for you, that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is praying for you. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 34. It is Christ that died, yea, rather. Ooh, I love the yea, rathers in the Bible. (laughs) I know that's old English, but I like it. It just sounds good. It is Christ that died, yea, rather. That is risen again. In other words, that's not the end of it. I've got something else to say. He's not in the grave any longer. He's risen. That's almost like saying something bad happened, but then you say, but. (laughs) That's not the end of it. Amen. So he says, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Put your name, us. That's your name. Us. Circle it. That's, that's plural. That's us. That's you. It includes everybody that belongs to God. All right. So what does that tell us? It tells us that we're not alone. Maybe no one else knows your troubles. Perhaps no one knows how you feel or what you're going through. But I want you to know you're not alone because Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He sits at the right hand of the Father and he prays for you. Jesus said that he was praying for Peter. I have a lot of favorite passages in the Bible. This is another one, all right? This encourages me. We also learned something about the enemy, too. We learned that he's a sifter of men and women of faith. Now, that's what it says. It says here, Satan 
has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Notice it was Satan that asked. He desires to sift men and women of faith. Of faith. Get that. Of faith. In fact, Satan wants to shipwreck our faith. He doesn't want us to believe. You see, believing is the key that unlocks the door to all the blessings and benefits from God. Get that. Faith is the key. If Satan can cause us to lose our key. (laughs) Oh, now come on now. If he can cause us to lose our key or to doubt what our key can do, then he can keep us from tapping into heaven and receiving from the Lord. And I want you to picture this now. Now, I want you to get a hold. So so I'm going to say that this door leads to the throne of God. Amen. And I cannot get through. This is a solid door and it is locked. I want the blessings of God. I want access to God. I want to believe God. Now, I want to receive of the Lord. But listen to me. There is a key. All right. The key of faith. We're not receiving anything of God unless we have faith. The Bible says whatever is not of faith is sin. We have to have faith. The devil attacks our faith. The deal here with Peter was faith. He was trying to sift him. He was trying to destroy him. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. That's what? That's your car now break down. No, he said that's your faith. Faith. Why are you going through the things you're going through? So that your faith can be strengthened. So that when you return, you can be good to me and help my brethren. Because they're going to go through the sifter too. Faith is the key. I can't receive anything unless I believe God by faith. I want access. I can try to kick it down. I can try to break the lock. I can try to do it man's carnal way. Oh, but wait a minute. God says there's another way. There's a better way. We're going to go by the key of faith. And we're going to open up the door. And you got access to the throne of God. Oh, I've come out now. And I've got a little bit of peace. And I've got some joy that comes. Oh, I've got some blessings that come from heaven. I've been going through a hard time. Time. It's been difficult. I've got the victory now. And I've, I've got the deliverance now. I've got the key. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I've got the key. I've got the key of faith. And I'm going in. You got to listen to me. Don't listen to the devil that tells you you can't receive anything from God. I've got the key of faith. I'm going in. <laughs> Sure, amen, sure, we've got healing in the name of Jesus. I'm going to give this one to you, sweetie. Hallelujah. We've got power in the name of Jesus. We've got peace. We've got joy that comes from God. Yeah, baby, sister, we got the victory. Come on. <laughs> and we got deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. What am I doing? <sighs> Devil, I'm going in. <laughs> yeah, I'm going in. I'm getting more. I'm going in. I need God. The key is faith. He said, I'll pray that your faith <sighs> not fail. Satan wants us to doubt God, doubt who God is, doubt what God can do, doubt God's existence, doubt God's Son, doubt salvation through Christ, doubt God's power, doubt God's our healer. Right? Satan is the sifter. I don't know why I'm huffing and puffing. <laughs> I've been working out. He likes to sift men and women of faith. So don't think that we'll be exempt from that. I know that I'm not. He comes like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And we have to understand that. We have to be aware of that. We need to be sober and vigilant, awake, alert to these things. We're not ignorant of his devices. We can't just walk around with our head in clouds and not realizing what's going on in the spirit world. The spirit world is very real. There are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness this age, spiritual hosts of weakness in the high places, and there will be shifting times in our lives. Oh, I got a lot to say in a few minutes. 
there may be some here today and you wonder in the world what's going on in your life. It could be that you're in the sifter or you're in the blender. Oh, yeah, you ever feel like you're in a blender? Man, my wife has a blender. It's called Ninja. Whoo! Man, don't put any body parts in that. It just destroys. You know, these kids, you know, they come on my bus sometimes and their, their pants are all shredded. <laughs> I look at them. I said, did you get stuck in a blender? They don't understand it. <laughs> you don't either, do you? <laughs> hey, man. But, but it could be that Satan is shifting you right now. You're going through the shredder, and it can be hard. But as we look at this verse, uh, let's see what we can find here. Jesus said to Peter, but I have prayed for you. So what's that tell us? tells us? It tells us that on the other side of the sifting is praying. Notice this. Notice that Jesus isn't praying for Peter not to be sifted. He's not praying for Peter. Jesus isn't praying for Peter to be taken out of the trial. He's not praying for Peter to not go through the trial, the test, or the sifting. He's praying that his faith not fail. So, my beloved, most of the time when we're going through the trial, the test, or the difficulties of life, I mean, we're praying for God to get us out of the situation. I know that I am. God, get me out of this mess. We're praying for God to deliver. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that's bad. But just maybe we've been praying wrong about some things in our lives. James says you you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. Perhaps we've been doing it wrong all this time. We just need to pray that God will give us the strength and the faith to endure the test. Just give us the strength and the faith to get through the fire. Maybe we just need to pray that our faith fail not. Because it could be that God is allowing certain things to take place in our lives for growth, development, and maturity. And many times we fight against God thinking it's the devil when God is simply trying to accomplish something in us and through us. And we won't let him. Okay, so, so Jesus prays for Peter that his faith not fail him during the sifting time. Now let me ask you, do you think that Jesus knows more than Peter? Yes. Do you think that Jesus knows exactly what's going to happen? Yes, he does. He prays that his faith not fail. See, that is more important. Jesus is concerned about Peter's faith. He doesn't pray for his finances. He prays for his faith. He didn't pray for his job. He prays for his faith. He didn't pray about his new car or whatever. He prays for his faith. Faith. Man, we're praying for all kinds of things, but really we're lacking faith. We're not getting what we should get through Christ. We're not receiving the benefits that we could because we lack the key of faith. I'm not saying you don't have any faith. I'm just saying personally that my faith isn't where it needs to be. (laughs) Okay, maybe you're, you're there, but I'm not. I'm not there, okay? So... So that's what's important to Jesus is faith. Amen. Look at what Peter said. He said, uh, look at what Peter said. First Peter 1 and 6 says, In this you greatly rejoice, so now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes. Those tested by fire may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So I think that Peter learned some things through the process. But because Peter wrote this much later after his experience in Luke chapter 22. He wrote this after the crucifixion. He wrote this after the day of Pentecost. He wrote this as he was looking back and remembering some of the things that he had gone through in his life. And he wants us to know what's important to God. And that is our faith. The genuineness of your faith. Genuine faith is real faith. All right. The sifting takes place and the devil is allowed to do it. The devil is doing the sifting. Okay. It says Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. He says he. So the devil is the one doing the sifting, not God. But Jesus says, I prayed for you. He's not praying the devil won't do the sifting, but that his faith will not fail him in the process. We're like, God, get the devil out of my life. I don't want him to sift me. 
But that's not what he prayed for. Jesus allowed Peter to be sifted, and he told him he was going to be sifted. He also told him, you're going to get through this. All right. All right. So he calls out to him, Simon, Simon, what's known as a double call. He uses the name twice, and you'll see this used seven or eight times in the Bible. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Samuel, Samuel, Abraham, Abraham. Jacob, Jacob, Simon, Simon. This is a double call, and it's, it's to bring out a sense of urgency. There's something that's very important that Jesus is trying to say to Peter. Peter, you need to listen up. It's urgent. It's pressing, important, vital, and imperative. It's critical. Every word that Jesus speaks from the Word of God, the Bible, is imperative. It is vital. It is important. It is necessary, and we must not take it lightly. Listen to me. Doctrine is important. You can't just go to any church. Well, you can go. Don't get me wrong. You can go. You can go to just any church. But for us, saved, born again, spirit-filled, doctrine is important. What's being taught is important. What my kids learn is important. I want it to be according to the Word of God. Jesus has something that's important to say to Peter. It's vital. What is it? Satan's asked for you that he sift you as wheat. But you see, the devil is not as smart as God is. Isn't that good? That's a good thing. What about the sifting process? Well, back in those days, you know, in the old days, you know, in the New Testament times, you know, they would take wheat and put it on a thing. It was like a big screen, and, and they would toss it up in the air, and the, the particles and the, the chaff would blow away with the wind, and the wheat would fall back down onto the screen. Some of the particles would even drop through the screen and so forth, but the wheat would remain. So the sifting process was something that really separated the useful from the non-useful. I don't need the chaff. I don't need the particles. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the grain. I'm looking for the wheat. Let me just say this. The devil... It's not as smart as God. Do you see what's going on here in the sifting process? What's going to happen? The devil's trying to destroy you. But God says, I'm getting weed out of this. I'm getting something out of this. I'm producing something out of this. Hallelujah. Man, the devil's going boom, 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 boom. And all the time, wheat's coming out. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you remember remember those little Pez things, you know? You you pop the neck back. You get a candy. You know, it's kind of like that. Devil pops you to get wheat. Pops you to get wheat. Amen. Every time. Come on now. Get the old Pez things out, you know. Every time you pop that thing back, you said, oh, glory to God. God's producing something in my life. I'm getting some wheat out of this. <laughs> Come on, church. The, the wheat is what remains. The useful remains. And you can take the wheat. You can grind it up and make some flour. Then you can bake some bread or make a cake. And you can feed a hungry soul. God says, now you're ready. I can use you to strengthen my brethren. Where's everybody today? <laughs> Man, this will work. So let's encourage each other today. God is still on the throne. God's in complete control. And what the devil may use for your destruction, God turns it around for your good and his glory. And God produces something that's useful to him. I mean, I can just see it, you know. Devil knocks me around and the the chaff and the particles just fly off. (laughs) You know, was it uh, uh, Charlie Brown? Was it stinky? Pig pen? (laughs) <laughs> Man, you don't touch pig pen. Every time he walked, particles were flying off. Every time he, he sat down, fell down, particles were flying off him. It was all <laughs> dirt, right? But I kind of think of that in our process of life. All these particles and all the chaff and all the troubles and all the trials and all the difficult and all that stuff is flying off of you. And then God looks at you and he sees a full grain of wheat. He says, now that's useful to me. Now I can use that. Now I can bless somebody. Now I can help somebody. I can use that as an instrument for my glory. Devil, you tried to destroy. You tried to kill. You tried to put fear in her. But I'm using her for my glory. <laughs> I want to tell you what God can do. I want to tell you what God can do. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. That which counts, that which is of value will never be lost in the sifting process. Only the non-useful will be lost or disposed of. Only the non-useful will be blown away. But the useful will remain. The useful will stay. What does that prove? That proves the devil doesn't know everything. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He's not in control. He's not sovereign. He is not all-knowing. And he's not all-powerful. You know, some people think the devil knows everything. I got news for you. He doesn't know. 
don't worry about praying out loud because you don't you don't want the devil to hear it. I do. <laughs> I'm going to my Jesus. I'm not so concerned about what the devil hears. I'm concerned about what heaven hears. I want to reach to heaven. I want to touch the hem of his garment. I want heaven to know. Let heaven hear our praises. Let heaven hear our prayers. Let heaven hear us declare Jesus Christ is Lord, King of kings, and Lord of lords. Let heaven hear that Jesus is coming back one day for glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Let heaven hear your faith. You have access into the throne of God through Jesus Christ. You've got the key of faith. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your power. Receive your infilling. Receive your Holy Ghost. We've got the key right to glory of God. Hallelujah. Devil tries to knock you out. Devil tries to keep you down. But folks, don't let him take your key. Don't let him take your key. You keep your keys. Hallelujah. Keep your keys. Oh, sometime back in my life, my wife lost her keys, man. We we're frantic everywhere trying to find our keys. That's what happens when you lose the key of faith. Church is all panic. Church is all frantic. They don't know what to do. They're thinking carnally. But my friend, when you find the key, there's a peace and a calm. And you all thank you, Jesus. Let's hold on to the key of faith. Don't let the devil in. Don't let the devil do what he wants to do. You trust God. All right. What about Job? I'm almost done. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan also came among them. So the devil came to the presence of God. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil said, yeah, but the truth is you've got a hedge around him and I can't do anything to him. But he said, if you let that hedge down, you let, him, you, you let me at him and I, he'll curse you to your face. Mm. So basically... God said to the devil that he could do this and he could do that, but you can't kill him. So we see that God has the devil on a chain. He can't just do anything he wants to do. God allows the devil to have certain access or do certain things, but he can't touch his life. But the thing is, the devil thought that if God would take the hedge down and allow him to have certain access, that Job would curse him to his face, that Job would disclaim God or denounce God. But Job didn't do that. So the devil was wrong. He was wrong. Job didn't do what the devil said that he would do. Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. What is that? That's the key of faith, buddy. He's sitting there in ashes. He's got, he's got, uh, what do you call, boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He's got three friends that are speaking carnally to him and don't have the mind of God. He's lost his children. He's lost his servants. He's lost his business. His wife is low. Curse God and die. The devil even use her? I'll leave that alone. Stick to your notes, Smalden. <laughs> the devil doesn't know everything. He doesn't know how you're going to act or react in the situation. He doesn't know how you're going to respond. He didn't know about how Job was going to respond either. But, but beloved, be encouraged today. The devil doesn't know everything. He doesn't know what's in the mind of God, but God knows what's in the mind of the devil. <laughs> That's cool. So notice Jesus said, Simon, Simon, then speak, this speaks of urgency. Listen up. I've got something to say that's important to you. The point I want to make here today is that Satan has asked for Peter so that he might sift him as wheat. But Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Not that he wouldn't be sifted. That wasn't it. But that your faith would not fail in the process. So know this. There will be a sifting of men and women of faith. But if you're here today and you're being sifted and it really has you down, don't be discouraged. Know this. That the same Jesus that prayed for Peter is the same Jesus that sits at the right hand of God and prays for you. I believe that Jesus is praying for this church. I do. You're not alone. You're not the only one who has ever gone through this sifting process. There will be testings of our faith. There will be trials. There will be mountains and valleys. There'll be rivers to cross, giants to fight, lions to defeat. People will rise up against you for no reason. And they'll slander your name. And they'll lie about you. 
I mean, just trying to live your life, trying to live for the Lord. You say, man, just leave me alone. Just let me live for God. No, they're not going to leave you alone because the enemy in their soul hates the Jesus in your heart. And so what I'm seeing today are manifestations of demonic powers of darkness. More and more in these last days, trying to discourage you, trying to put you down. But when the devil rises up and when demonic activity rises up, people are trying to put you down. That means this, my beloved friend, your light is shining. <laughs> because if your light wouldn't shine, they wouldn't try to put you down. But because your light shines, because they see Jesus in you, they get upset and they want to retaliate and they get angry. Oh, yeah, I tell you, that religious spirit wants to persecute the spirit of God that's inside of you. But my friend don't back down don't let down you just keep your eyes on jesus the devil's bringing it through the sifter and god's allowing it because when you come through you're going to be a whole grain of wheat that god can use you you can make flour you can bake a cake you can bake some bread you can feed a hungry soul you can touch somebody's life you can be a help to somebody going through a hard time you can say i've been there sis i've been in darkness i've been through sickness i've been through hell and back that god is faithful and God brought me out. And if God brought me out, God can bring you through too. Hallelujah. God, it's because some of you are hurt and some of you are down. Some of you are low. Man, the devil has been hitting on you pretty hard. Listen to me, please. Because I'm trying to do the same thing. When the devil's hitting on you really hard, you reach into your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. I'm believing the Lord. I'm going for what God has for me, the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I'm just going to get it all. <laughs> Jason, I'm just going to get it all. I got the key of faith. I've, I come through the Jesus and the power of Jesus name. We've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the blessings of God. God said, he'll forgive me of all my uh, iniquities. He'll forgive me. He'll cleanse me and heal me of all my diseases. The Bible said with God, nothing's impossible. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Greater is he that lives in you than he that's in that world. Amen. We can stand fast in the power of God's in the might. Amen. We can believe the Lord by faith. We have everything. God has given us access. Oh, hallelujah. I got to quit. I'm quitting. I'm quitting. After a little bit. I'm quitting. All right, we're bringing her down. Peter said, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try it. Man, I, I just, I used to think, Brother Greg, is something wrong with me? Because I'm always in the fire. Man, I said, I know I'm a sinner. I know that. But Lord, it seems like all the time it's in the frying pan. <laughs> Some things taste better cooked. <laughs> Come on, folks. Bear with me for a second. <laughs> you ever eat raw eggs? Huh? Who likes raw eggs in this church? Nobody? Good. I, I hate not to have to like you. <laughs> raw eggs taste a lot better cooked. Hey, man, I like them scrambled. I like them fried. I like them over easy. Some things taste better cooked. <laughs> and so don't think it's strange. You're not the only one. Going through the fiery trial, which is to try some strange thing happen to you. But rejoice. Now, that's tough. Now, I'm not rejoicing that I'm going through the fire. But we are to rejoice in what's going to come out of the fire. You see, it's hard for us to see that. It's hard for this. Because God says, I'm going to grow you and mature you. Michael went into the Marine Corps at 18 years old. Reluctantly, I let him go. I mean, that was tough, you know. And, uh, but I tell you, folks, after four years, he came back, not as a boy, but as a man. He went through the fire, and he came back as a man. He matured over the years. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, that you also may be glad with exceeding joy. There's, 
That's an eschatological view. That means you've got to look to the end. You have to think eternally. Don't look, just don't live, don't think, don't look just at the here and now, but you've got to think about what's ahead. That one day we'll be with the Lord. One day he's going to return for his people. One day we won't be suffering. One day we won't be in the frying pan anymore. Know that what the devil means for your destruction, God means for your good. God's will for your life is found in the process of growth, development, and maturity. The devil wants to destroy you, but God is right now making intercession for you. Right now, God is making intercession for you before the Lord God. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. God is now making you into something more right now for his glory. You might be satisfied, and, but God isn't. See, God, God looks at this church, and he said, I, I, I'm putting it through the fire, through the fire, through the fire, because I'm going to make that church into something more for my glory. <clears throat> we have to constantly think eternally. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe you're in the frying pan. Maybe it's hot. I know it's sizzling. You're cooking. But don't jump out just yet. Don't bail off just yet. Because what God is cooking is going to taste a whole lot better after you go through it. It will be attractive to those who are watching you. And they will taste and see that the Lord is good because they see him through your they see Jesus. Why, Lord, am I going through all of this? Why? Because God says, when I'm finished with you, they'll no longer see you. They'll see me. Mm. You see, that's what he's doing. And then he can use you to minister to others, to pray for them to bless them, to encourage them, to help them out of the ditch. Folks, a lot of hurting people today. A lot of hurting people. A lot of people in the church hurting. Some of you have been hurt. You've been hurt by friends. You've been hurt by family. You've been hurt by what people have done to you, said to you, said about you. There's jealousy everywhere. There's a lot of things the devil try to use to discourage you and put you down and hurt you, but God's just... Sifting all that stuff away, all the particles and all the chaff, so that when he's done, he's got a full grain of wheat. He's going to use it to feed somebody that's hungry. Would you stand with me, please? I love you. I love you. I love you all. I love you all so much. I thank God for this church. I thank God for this church. Praise God. Amen. Shar, you believe that. You just hang on to that. Amen. You receive that, sweetie. That's it right there. Receive of God. Amen. She lost something. She's just like her daddy. <laughs> she lost something. Amen. Amen. Love you. Love you all so much. We've got to believe God together. Amen. Believe God together. I love you. Praying for you. Believe in God for you. Oh, Lord, with every eye closed, every head bowed, I just want you to know, my friend, that you're not alone. <laughs> I know the devil, I believe, I really do. I'm not just saying this, but I do believe that he's working hard now. I believe he's working hard trying to wear the saints of God out. <sighs> I also know that God's in control. So I know that whatever the devil does to me, that God has to allow a certain latitude because God's in control of my life and I belong to him. So I realize and come to the conclusion that in all things, I must put my faith and trust in the Lord. I may not understand why. I know the devil wants to destroy, but that's not God's intention or purpose. God may use the enemy of our soul to produce something that will bring God glory. And that's a whole different way of looking at things. Maybe you're in the frying pan right now. Maybe you're going through it. But I want you to know that you're not alone. I want you to know that, that I care about you. My family cares about you. 
that I know that God wants us to make it. God has given us the tools necessary. We have Jesus. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the key of faith. We have access. So don't believe the lies of the enemy. I want you to trust in the Word of God. So for you today, I simply want to encourage this church. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you've had a rough week spiritually. Maybe the devil's telling you a bunch of lies. Maybe you've lost your key and you need to find it. Whatever it is, I want to give us a few moments here today to have the opportunity to come to Jesus and to pray. According to the will of God, yes. But you come and you bear your heart before the Lord. I will pray for you. I will lay hands on you and I'll believe God for you as well. Whatever it might be, I just want you to be encouraged. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Don't allow him to beat you down. But you know that God is producing something that will bring him glory and enable God to use you for, to bless and to touch others. In Jesus' name. God, I'm asking you right now to bless this church. Touch them in the name of the Lord. Father, we praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. I pray that you would encourage the church. Encourage the body of Christ. Touch them now by your spirit, God. Give them that word that they need. Strengthen their faith, I pray, in the name of the Lord. God, we love you. God, we praise you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Would you sing that song together? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God's a good God. Amen. He's a good God. We worship you, Lord. There's a peace I've come to know. Oh, hallelujah. Praise my God. Heart and Jesus. Trust. We trust in you, Lord God. There's a name of the Lord. God, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can say Glorify your holy name. It is, it is well. well. Jesus has overcome my Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Father God. Exalt you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings and all the benefits that we have through Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. Strengthen my brothers and sisters, Lord. Bless them, Lord, I pray. Hallelujah. Give them strength, I pray. Heal them, God. Oh, Lord. Jesus, my Lord, I praise you. Oh, God, worship you. Hallelujah. We praise you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Father God. We love you, Lord. There's a day that's drawing me. Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We praise your holy name. We bless you. And the shadows of the Jesus. And my faith shall be my Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Glorify you, Jesus. Magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord. No more sorrow. Touch your tongue. I want to thank uh, Brother Paul for ministering last Sunday for us. I appreciate Sister Shelley uh, leading worship for us. Amen. I heard, I heard good things. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Let's pray here this morning. Pray that you'll come back tonight for service. The Lord bless all of you. Amen. Um, Brother Greg, wait a minute. You just had surgery. Sister Laura Lee, would you pray for us, please?